Your boy Joe Dog coming back at you guys for the most important segment of the week. This week is we're talking and breaking down the fights for this Saturday. Santos, Thiago Santos versus uh, Glover Teixeira. And this is going to be uh, pretty much like a, a slot for the next runner up to fight for the belt. And uh, whoever wins this is going to be the next guy for Jan Blakovich, assuming he gets past uh, one of the best in the game right now, Israel Adesanya, who will uh, be in his next uh, title uh, defense match, will be Adesanya uh, trying to take the second belt, trying to hold the second belt simultaneously. He'll have two belts if he can get past uh, uh, John Blakovich. And uh, well, if John Blakovich gets past him, then the winner of Glover versus Thiago should be the next runner up to uh, to go for that belt. Uh, but uh, before we get started, just wanted you guys to know because I am kind of new to this. I know there's going to be some first time viewers now. There's going to be. I want to also thank the guys who've been following me since I did get started, who are uh, starting their membership with me today. I got a few new members. I want to thank you guys. Give you a shout out. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a shout out before the end of the video. So stay tuned to listen up for your names and. Uh, I wanted to thank you guys for your uh, new memberships and I just want you to know that what's, what you're getting into is not just somebody who has, if you look through my previous videos and my pictures and you go to my Twitter account, Fighting Guru, at Fighting Guru, F-I-G, it's going to be posted on the video, I don't have to spell it out for you guys, it'll be posted on the screen somewhere at the bottom over here, but uh, if you see my bet slips I posted before the fight night that you'll see I made sick profits, I only got one wrong. I, this would have been uh, my third week undefeated with no wrong. The only one that I did get wrong, I don't count as getting wrong because as you can see in the other pictures that I posted in my previous video, if you look, the numbers were lopsided. It was a landslide. Bobby Green got a decision stolen from him once again. It isn't even the first time this has happened to him. But, uh, you know, he got a decision stolen from him. He won. He did more than triple uh, strikes landed in every different category. He won it decisively. It wasn't even a close fight. But anyways, if it wasn't, but we so we got the right pick. We just got uh, the bad end of the you know stick on that one. So what can we do if we just keep picking them right in the long run? That we'll still be in good shape. Don't worry about these type of things. But that's the other beauty behind my system. I want you guys to understand that when you become a member of my um, member of my uh, group. When you're a, a VIP member, you're gonna get my bet slips first thing by no later than Monday. You'll have my bet slips for that following Saturday. So two days after the fights, you'll have my entire bet slip in hand so that you can see the entire way I bet my system that I use that makes sure that even if we have one or two fights that didn't go our way, our picks were wrong, that you'll be still in the profits. You're not gonna lose your money. You'll always be winning money instead of losing money because you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. You're insuring yourself by having different variations and combinations of the winning picks so that it's a safe system. It's bulletproof. And I didn't wake up one day and overnight decide that I want to do a YouTube channel. I, I Before I made this channel, I, I, tr I tried this out for a very long time. My system had been proven to be bulletproof before I came and uh, was was willing to be responsible for giving you guys tips with with your money and uh, you know being responsible for a lot of you depending on this as extra income I had to be sure before I came that's what took me so long but anyways now I don't want to get too sidetracked let's get back on track with the fights uh, our first fight of the night I believe we're looking at uh, did you send me the list yes thank you our first fight. Oh, let me tell you something about this card, folks. Listen up closely. This is the most important thing. If you guys are taking notes, highlight this, uh, outline it, do whatever you got to do. Take your money out of your savings. Go look into your sofa in between the cushions. This has in the longest time, and I'm an avid, you know, better. I invest money for a long time. I've been doing this. I have never, and I can't remember ever seeing, and I doubt we will ever see in a very long time at least, a card that is this that has the potential of being as profitable for an investor or better whatever you want to call us uh, as profit uh, the potential of being as profitable as this card and let me tell you why not just because of the easy picks 
I see this as a walk in the park. There's not going to be any challenges as far as picking the right fights. It's going to be very clear cut and dry for me. Someone who's very uh, good at this type of stuff is not going to have trouble finding out the correct predictions on any of these matchups besides maybe one or two that could go uh, a couple of different ways. The majority of these are going to be very clear for someone like me to pick the correct uh, one. It's not going to be my hardest card. It's going to be one of my easiest and it also by some miracle. I don't know why. Usually when it's very easy to predict, they're not paying well. You have a lot of plus uh, 500s and minus 700s and 600s. I've never seen a card paying at these type of odds. Almost all of them, even the guys who should be a, the one, it's like that I was mentioning, like the John, like last week we had like, for example, uh, Miles Johns, who I said was not, it was gonna dominate him from, from beginning to the end of the fight. It was not gonna, it was gonna be a mismatch. He was a slight favorite, almost at pick him. I think he, he almost even turned into an underdog. That's, they got they messed it up and in this case all the fights are like that they all have excellent value so for example the same thousand dollars let's say you wanted to invest or bet on tonight or on this Saturday's card would have for example if you went five out of five or like what I did 10, 11 out of 12 with only a thousand dollars starting with that thousand dollars will make you almost 10 times more then the same thousand dollars if you went 11 for 12 on the previous cards or the next cards. So we are getting the best bank for our buck on here because the odds, there are no huge, look at the lineups. There are not any big favorites. And if there are, there's like one, the rest of them are near uh, near pickums. There's no huge discrepancies between one fighting uh, uh, fighter and the other. So they're all very close. Uh, that means they're paying very well, especially when you're using my, my uh, famous, special, unique, self-made round robin system. Oh man, you're getting favorites that should be even bigger favorites at underdog money payouts. Do you know what that means? The guys who are supposed to win, more likely to win, should win, and I'm agreeing and confirming that they will win are gonna be paying you Excellent underdog money, more than two to one, more than four to one when you're doing it, implementing my system. You don't have to worry about being a rocket scientist. Don't worry about trying to figure out what the system is and how to use it because I'm giving you the opportunity to be a member. And if you're a member, Monday morning, the latest, sometimes even Saturday or Sunday, Saturday night or Sunday morning or Sunday night, no later than Monday, you will have my exact personal own betting slips. All my parlays and bets, straight bets, everything you needed to know about how to make your night end up the same way my night is going to end. So we'll have the exact, you can just go, my, what most of my customers have done in the past, instead of writing it down and making mistakes or having to translate it to somebody who doesn't have a good hearing or has a hearing problem or doesn't have good listening skills, what they do is they just take the images that I'm going to send them on Monday morning and they're going to go to the cashier or the teller or their bookie or wherever does their bets for them. And they're going to say, hey, I want this exact bet slip right here. This parlay right here, this bet slip number 55555XX452. I want you to duplicate this ticket and give me the same one, but bet 500, not 100. Or bet 1,000 or bet $50. So the only thing I can recommend you guys should change depending on what your budget is and what you're aiming to try to make is the amount that's being wagered. Everything else don't touch or you're doing it at your own risk and I can't guarantee you the same thing I've been guaranteeing you guys that's always been working. All right, anyway, so back on track. First fight of the night, we've got, let's see here, I'm getting so excited already thinking about fights. All right, so, uh, first fight of the night. We've got, Lopez, Gustavo Lopez. Let's see here, what's standing out to me? This is going to be his second fight in the UFC. His first fight didn't go well, but the guy fought the devil himself. Uh, Marab, the guy's a monster. I think he's still on the feet. He's still, look at uh, Marab Dashal, he's his previous opponent. Yeah, I don't even worry about it. The guy's a beast. You've seen what he did to Dotson. You've seen what he did to uh, Casey Kenny, who's awesome. He just beat Nathaniel Wood and fought Nathaniel Wood only a month after fighting uh, 
against who did he fight that uh, Hawaiian guy? I think he what's his name? Uh, but he is a durable guy. He went all four three rounds with this guy and battered him. I think he threw like 300 kicks to his abdominum alone. His body was like a hammer that night. He used it to beat the crap out of somebody. And then one month later, he beat. You know how sturdy and how how game of an opponent Nathaniel Wood is. Well, Casey Kenny beat him decisively and came with two victories back to back putting on an excellent show well that same Casey Kenny got molly whopped and just took down like 17,000 times in one three round fight by Marab. Marab makes people look like they don't even belong in the UFC like he looks like he's toying with them that's how decisively Marab wins well that's the that was his debut so they gave him a pretty tall order to start in the UFC and I've seen a lot of Gustavo Lopez's fights that guy's a beast in his own right so that I'm very excited about seeing this guy's uh, uh, first real fight that's going to be something on his level to begin with I mean Marab's not a, there's not many people on Marab's level it's not a fair fight especially debut when you're debuting and you're still getting the jitters out the way you know you're not fighting at your 100% well now he's got the jitters out the way he's a little bit more experienced so let's see here All right, so his second fight now against, it's for some reason, this is not showing his opponent, but I know his opponent is, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to do here to fix this problem. All right, so my pick is Gustavo Lopez, and I got him being Felipe Corrales, who's the slight underdog. Not a, he just, he's not a big underdog here, so uh, that means, like I said earlier, they're going to pay excellent money for someone who I think should be a much bigger. This is just another example of what should be a bigger favorite who I don't see having trouble anywhere really. This guy's got good submissions. He's got good defense. He's, got, he doesn't, he's not just a counter striker. He doesn't wait around for you to strike. He'll put some points on the board as well. You can't really uh, dominate him anywhere. He's not bad at any area overall. He's just a good fighter all around. So he's, he's in good, he's strong for his division. So no trouble here. Very confident pick. Uh, definitely he's going to be in some of my parlays. I got G Gustavo Lopez as my first pick of the night. And he's definitely going to have to redeem himself after losing to the devil himself, Marab. And so after that, you know he's going to be putting an extra 110% on top of the 100% that he's gonna, he always usually gives. He doesn't mess around. This guy comes and he's, he comes to fight. So this is going to be a performance, I think, that he... Is going to stand out from any of his other ones because he needs to redeem himself after being 0-1 in and the biggest and most important career uh, and organization that he's ever been in. He definitely wants to make a name for himself. This is his livelihood that's on the line. He can't lose two in a row and be 0-2. So look for him to do some excellent performance in the ring uh, coming up on Saturday. All right. So that's our first pick. We got Gustavo Lopez. All right, let's see what am I looking at now. Sorry, this thing's a little bit slow today. Okay. All right, now the second fight. We are looking at the second fight tonight. Uh, Saturday night will be... Max Griffin. Max Griffin. All right, now we're going to talk about some real money here. Max Griffin is going to be fighting against Ramiz. I'm going to have trouble pronouncing this guy's name a little bit, but uh, bear with me. Ramiz Bramihaj. This happens to be my actually only confident uh, underdog of the night. So now we're talking about some guy who's won 8 out of 10 of his fights. And all eight, a hundred percent of his wins are by submission. He doesn't let it go to the scores, uh, scorecards. He doesn't. Let it, he doesn't leave it in the judges' hands. This guy's a hungry lion. He's gonna take his. He's got some sick arm bars and some ground game that you know is is, is very impressive. Uh, I bet from what I've seen. So I, I do. I could. I could see a prop bet. I'm gonna like. This is only my first video. I, I need to do some more research. I'm trying to get the. You guys to jump ahead of the line movement so we're not going to get too crazy into the betting right now we're just going to do the basic winning and losing ones later on in the week maybe tomorrow i'll have some prop bets for you like on the over unders and submissions and 
I'm excellent at those. I'm, I'm usually at uh, 90 to 100 percent range through uh, every Saturday. I don't get more than one wrong, if even that. Last week I was 100 percent on my uh, part on my prop bets. Oh, I actually got one wrong. I'm sorry, but I knew it was a long shot. But it was just paying so well. I had to take a $50 shot at it. But I mean, again, we were we, we were in over $10,000 in profits last week. So what's 50 bucks, right? That could have made us uh, win several hundred more dollars. Anyways, but well, you could play around with money like that, sprinkle it here and there, but we were, we only missed one. But as, as far as like the real ones that I even put in parlays, we, we were we were 100%. We didn't miss any prop bets on those. I got overs and unders perfect on, uh, for last week, and I expect to do that again this week. Uh, but uh, before I get into those overs and unders and method of winnings and rounds, I want to do a little bit more research for you guys. So I, I do my due diligence, and you guys are not uh, risking any of your money on things that I'm not positive. There's no need to rush, we still got time for that. And the good thing about prop bets and those type of bets is the, the lines don't move much. Unlike regular money lines, straight bets, they do move fast. So we gotta get ahead of those. That's why I'm gonna focus on that more importantly and first. So we'll make that a priority. All right, so Darren, let's see, let's see. Uh, so that's my first underdog of the night, okay? So listen closely, put an asterisk next to this guy. He's an underdog. So he's paying, and the last time I picked underdogs was two weeks ago. I picked only three underdogs out of 12 fights. Guess what? Look at my tickets. All three, right? that was the day, three weeks, uh, the Whitaker uh, was the first underdog. He ended up being even money, almost. No, he was still a slight underdog uh, when the fight started. But the other two, Tai Tusava and Rachmanov, they became favorites at fight night on the day of the fights. They turned from, like, I had Rachmanov at, if you can see my tickets, plus 135 because I locked them in early. And you guys are going to get my picks early as well. So these, these uh, underdogs, you'll, you'll make some great money because you're not going to wait until they turn into favorites or less, or less of an underdog. Because eventually when you're doing this on a weekly basis for a long run, those add up. We're talking thousands of dollars a month and several thousands of dollars uh, a year when, you, when you're getting ahead of the lines. Anyways, uh, so this one, we're going with the underdog, uh, Ramiz. Brahmas to beat Max Griffin. And I'm going to look more into the submission, but within the, my guess would be in the dis, inside the distance that uh, Max Griffin will end up uh, coming short on that. Uh, so next one, we're going to go to Darren Elkins. Oh, this is going to be a fun matchup. Darren Elkins and Eduardo Garagio, Garagio, however you want to pronounce his name. We'll just call him by his first surname. All right, let's see. What do we got on this one here? All right, Darren is definitely who I'll be picking on this fight. Let me see if anything stands out to me that I wanted to point out, or we can just move quickly past this one and not waste too much time on it because it's really... Not much to say about his opponent, nothing special. So, uh, yep, third fight. I'm going with Darren Elkins to take this. Uh, Darren, you know, not too big for his side, but, you know, he, he, he doesn't just sit around waiting to get, you know, uh, he's not a really a counter striker, so he does move forward and he, he will dish out some strikes and. I, you know, he's landing up almost four strikes per minute. His takedown average is what I'm really going to uh, be counting on him to use. He does about three takedowns per three. He averages about three takedowns per minute. Uh, his defense is pretty excellent as well. And uh, he's got a pretty decent record. Um, now his uh, opponent, he's not really been on a scene for long. He, he's kind of like... Uh, and also, I want you. I know it looks a little scary because uh, Elkins is coming off of a, a pretty bad losing streak right now. But if you look at who he's fought against, nobody can really uh, shake their heads at that because he, he's fought some beasts. Ryan Hall, we all know that guy's a beast. No, he's he, he makes he's like another Marab where he makes people look like they're not even UFC level. He, he can make some of the greats look bad. So there's no shame in losing to Ryan Hall. Ricardo Lamas, that guy's a killer. You know, he's kind of slowly turning into the gatekeeper of the division. But even even at his end of his career, approaching the end of his career, I, I would uh, more than half the time say that, you know, he's going to come in still as a favorite 
uh, on most of the matchups that they'll put them against. Anybody flirting around the top 15, top 10, I still, most of the time, would can see him coming in as a favorite. So Ricardo Lamas is no shame in losing to him. The champ, Alexander Volkanovsky, he went all three rounds with the champ and lost by unanimous decision. But again, before that, before fighting the, the cream of the crop, he was on a one, two, three, he was like on a 10 fight win streak. And he did fight Dennis Bermudez, Michael Johnson, Mirsad Bektek. So anybody who was like not top three, top five, he was going running through them. So that's why uh, he's a confident pick of mine as well. Especially fighting against a guy who's still very green. He, he's barely got one foot in the door right now. Uh, Eduardo Gray, he's showing some signs of potential, but uh, nothing to, that really stood out too much. So don't worry, uh, that's another confident pick of mine. We can go with um, Darren Elkins on that one. So the next fight now we've got... Oh, I can't wait for this one. For the fourth fight is going to be Alexander Romanov versus uh, the Brazilian Marcos Regirio de Lima. De Lima, little chubby side, he's coming in, uh, he's not in the best physical condition, but neither is. But even though Alexander Romanov doesn't, if you've seen this guy walking in the streets, you're not going to ever. I think he was even a sumo wrestler uh, in the past. He was doing some sumo wrestling, so that tells you how, how his strength and takedown uh, capabilities are. This is the kind of guy that if he gets the ability to not, and he's got, for a big guy, he moves like, he doesn't move like a big guy, let me tell you, he, he doesn't look like a fighter, but this guy's like a girl, I think his nickname is King Kong or Gorilla or something like that, King Kong I think is his nickname, right? Yeah, King Kong, that's his nickname for a reason. This guy, well, if he has the opportunity to not express uh, to waste energy and he just like give you get, take you down to the ground easily and then he the second choice is by wasting half of his energy bar by suplexing you from the balcony from the nosebleed sections and running all the way up like he'll pick you up over his head and do some like wwe type of body slams i don't know if it's for a show or he just like he he's into it he has fun doing that type of stuff but i have fun watching this guy so i'm going to be glued to the tv when he's fighting but it messes with the mentality of his fighters. When his fighters are being tossed, when a guy who's usually used to coming in the heavier, bigger, stronger guy who bullies his opponents is now being the one that's getting flung around the ring and body slammed and put and tossed over someone's head onto the other canvas, that messes with somebody's psyche, man. That puts them, that makes them confused. Like, where am I? What's going on here? I'm not used to this. So that is a half of the battle right there is the psych behind the fight um inside the fight but uh even on top of that besides that type of stuff the guy's a beast on the ground his ground game is impressive once you get somebody to ground he doesn't just lay on top of him and con try to get some control time and uh points this guy's gonna do some damage and i can see this fight coming to an end of, inside the first round or early second round even but this guy's 12 and 0 undefeated or 13 and 0 maybe now, but I know he's undefeated 12 or 13 and 0 right now for a reason, man. I mean, obviously he didn't have it before the UFC. He wasn't facing the best of the competition, but he was getting through them like so quickly and easily that you could tell it didn't matter who the competition was unless this guy was going to be somebody with excellent takedown defense, excellent strength, top control, experience. You got to have a lot to keep up with this guy. So this big boy's coming up take your head off and he's not looking to let it go to the decisions hardly any of this fight in it but he does have the gas tank to go there if, in case it does so that's why he's a, another confident parlay piece alexander romanov i'm gonna i've wasted too much time on these picks and the introduction so i'm gonna try to skim through the rest of these i know you guys got things to do as well sorry for taking so long but i'm gonna try, i promise to try to speed up the rest of it in case your add is kicking in and your adderall prescription is out and you guys got to get a refill <laughs> I'll speed up through the card, all right? All right, who are we on to now? So next card I got, next fight on the card that I got. We've got Bevan Lewis and Trevor Ga Trevin Giles. Very interesting matchup. You know, it's like seeing two fighters. It's like watching two brothers fighting. I mean, these guys are going to be neck and neck. They, they really remind me a lot of each other, like their output, their defense, their striking style like i think to be honest the uh the guy who uh turned into the slight favorite 
is the guy who actually is like the 60-40. I give the slight advantage to He's He does pretty much everything that Giles does, Trevin Giles does, just a little bit better, a little bit more technical, a little bit cleaner. His, his uh, grappling, his, uh, his uh, what's the word, um, his uh, uh, spr sprawling uh, is a lot more better in, in every aspect. So it's just, it's hard to explain it. Uh, it's, uh, from a fighter's point of view, from watching both of them in their fights, I'm definitely more confident in, in Trevin Giles, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bevan Lewis taking this uh, win by decision. I'm definitely going to go with decision on this one. This one's going to the to the scorecards, and I can even see a split decision possibly. But uh, Bevan Lewis will definitely win this fight, in my opinion. So we got Bevan Lewis here, but not the best parlay piece. I mean, when the fight's going to be super close, you could parlay him if you're going to, you know, you could make. Again, do you, anybody, who, this is for the people who are not going to be my uh, subscribe, my uh, members. My members, don't worry about taking notes on who to parlay, who not to parlay. You guys will get that from me Mondays. I already have it ready, so uh, if you've already subscribed and you already have them, then you don't have to worry about listening to that. But if you didn't subscribe, make sure to subscribe and ask how to become a member so you can, before the lines start moving, be able to see the parlays and like these are the things that I factor in in my process. Not only do I do different variations, so in case somebody blows it for us or somebody gets robbed like Bobby Green did, we don't have all our eggs in one basket, but also I take into factor who's gonna go to the scorecards? Who's gonna give us the chance of getting robbed on one of the decisions? Who's gonna give us a, a guaranteed win by submission or knockout uh, according to my studies? And I factor that in also who's the one with the least amount of resistance and the least amount of paths to victory that is going against our pick. So if I see our pick is a for sure a uh, fight that's going to be a winner, that's going to be an easy fight without much adversity in it, I'll put him in more of the parlays and I'll put more money on his parlays. So I, I it, the system is just so beautiful. Like again, I didn't wake up one day and decide to make a YouTube channel and give you guys by trial and error my system. I mastered it, perfected it, and tried it numerous times back to back to back weeks where it was not just working, working beautifully, uh, just paying 10 to 1, 80 to 1, 10, 15 to 1. The odds I had, I, I had last week and the week before $2 tickets that paid me $200 almost, 180. 85 to 1, I won more than one ticket paying 85 to 1 odds. That's how I developed my system to be. So anyway, but so when it's like five to one odds, 10 to one odds, I can put $10,000 on those. It's money in the bank. That means it's 99% sure gonna hit. And that's why I had more often cards that were flawless or just one wrong, more often than I've had cards that had two wrong even. Never had cards with three wrong. So anyways, back to the next fight now. We've got our, are we on the sixth fight now or the fifth fight? Um. The uh, sixth fight. Sixth fight. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Yeah, this one I'm looking forward to. This girl's got a future. So the future versus the past, who's well, still got a future. Jan Zionen. I hope I'm not mispronouncing it. I got to get a good. I got to hire somebody to teach me how to say these names only. Hey, I'm going to promote you. Your new job is the name girl. How do I say these names? Scream it out for me. Jan, what? If you don't know, you're fired. <laughs> Get your stuff. Get out. You're Claudia fired. Gadelha. Ooh, that was nice. I like that. Say it again louder. Claudia Gadelha. Beautiful. Beautiful. We got to pay some big money for that. Nobody can say names like this one. Good job. All right. Claudia Gadelha is going to go against... How do you say her name? Hi. Oh, get out. You're fired. Get out. You're only good as the last thing you did. All right. Claudia, I'm going to spell it for you guys, all right? I'm going to spell it. I'm just kidding. Zayanan, Yan. That's a mouthful. Yeah, she's impressive, man. You guys, just for fun, forget studying, for just go watch her fights. Go watch her previous fights. She's a fun, fun, fun girl to watch fight. She's got heart. She's got skills. Excellent takedowns. Excellent. She knows how to win school by decision. She knows how to win by any way possible. She she she's always trying to win. She doesn't rest. She doesn't lay off a moment. She gets. She puts the pressure on. She 
She had excellent takedown defense everywhere. I think what are her strikes? Uh, let's see here. Strike landing per minute. Uh, I think I remember being impressed when I saw it. Let me see here. What's wrong? I won't open it up. Uh, 6.72. 6.72? What does she absorb? Uh, 3.88. Wow. So she's landing at almost seven significant strikes. That's significant. Most important thing that the judges look at. She lands seven of those per minute. And she only absorbs three. That's a nice ratio if I've ever seen one. All right, so how about her opponent, Claudia? I know she's not too bad herself, but not on that level, right? What is she so striking? 3.4. She only lands half of that. And how much is she absorbing? About the Four. same? Huh? 4.5. Wow, she absorbs. So she gets hit more than she hits. And I remember that. That's why she usually leaves her fights bloody to death. And it's a bloodbath. But this girl is going to pick her apart, man. And she's going she's gonna to be the longer, taller, size advantage as well. You know, Claudia Goodell is not the biggest person she does got strength on her but this girl's got strength and skills she knows how to use your own body weight remember i studied all different forms of uh i when i see a skilled fighter i can see one from a mile away she knows how to use size against somebody you when you're trained at her level i apologize about the phone call in the middle of this video we'll stop that from coming anyway so back to what we were saying Anyway, this girl will not be at a disadvantage anywhere, so don't worry about anything that may uh, create. And guess what she's paying at? What are the odds on this fight? Do you know? I have to look at that. It's almost pickums, man. These people, these like favorites. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. They're paying at numbers that don't make sense. Like, she's not going to lose. She's only got one loss in her career. She's on an amazing fight. How many fights win streak is she on right now? Um... She's on a good a long win streak and she's got the momentum on her. She's hungry. She's motivated. She, she doesn't need, the, uh, you know, fans to back. She's not the type of a fighter where, who Claudia Gadell is used to being. Ten. Ten fight win streak, right? Yeah. Ten fight win streak, this woman. Uh, how many were in the UFC? I don't know. Just look at the stats page. Five. Five fight win streak in the UFC alone. Wow, so nobody can say she's been fighting cans or low op opposition. So this girl is somebody to look out for. She's, she's going to have a good feature in the, in the organization. Anyways, I don't think a, we don't need to spend too much time on that one. That's another good fight. I would definitely want to uh, do some extra research on that. I can maybe find some prop bets for you on that one as well. So look for my prop bets video coming up soon. Those pay real good money. Uh, the next fight we got is the seventh fight. That's Brendan Allen and Ian, right? All right, Brendan Allen, man. I mean, look, what can we say? This guy, you know, depending on how he shows up for the fight, uh, he could be a scary dude. I mean, this is a guy who we've seen how impressive. The biggest favorite of the night, a uh, guy who even came in as a favorite against a guy who was on a five-fight, uh, I'm sorry, 13-fight win streak with five of his last fights being wins by knockout. Holland still came in as a favorite over that guy, okay? And... Then he became a favorite of minus 715, the biggest favorite by a landslide, doubling the second biggest favorite almost of the night. Kevin Holland got defeated. The biggest favorite of last week's card, Kevin Holland, who finished his opponent so quickly in the first round, that guy got beat. I mean, although I'll give it, he was winning the majority of the fight, but if somebody... That, the fighting is weird, man. Like, even when somebody is losing, that doesn't mean that they're really losing. Like, look at Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman, the rumble in the jungle. I mean, he was losing the whole fight, but that was his plan. Ali told his, I'm going to lose, I'm going to take some punishment until he wears himself out. And then, boom, that one hitter quitter. He knocked his lights out. But that was the plan. Lose the fight until it's time to win it, baby. It's all you got to have the end, the end of game plan is all that matters, man. It doesn't matter what happens. So that's why this is one of those fights that we may have to look into the live betting. Live betting is a crucial, essential part of the gambling that we have to do here. At, in, uh, what am I going to call my followers? We've got to have a cool name for us. All right? I mean, we're a family here, so we got to have like a, 
like our own circle. We got to call ourselves, uh, what are we going to call ourselves? I, I want some suggestions in the comment box, okay? And give me give me a name, like my, my posse of uh, whatever we are, you know? Anyway, so, but over here we got to start finding you know every every little advantage we can use to milk the system i mean live betting when we know that there's like jordan is a perfect example charles jordan slow fighter to start with he always starts off slowly look at his last fight against i don't want to get sidetracked i'm sorry but anyways we'll talk about these little tips when you're a member only by the way i give you guys tricks so in case one day god forbid i go walk outside get hit by a bus i need somebody to know how to do what i'm doing so if you can't keep getting my bet slips, but if you're a member, you're going to know the system behind the madness that you guys see every week that pays so beautifully. The beauty behind it, the madness behind all this, you guys will know the system and the equation and how to do it yourselves, all right? Anyways, uh, so uh, live betting is something that we have to probably look into to this one with, uh, but Brendan Allen is a dangerous man so um and look who ian has lost against less far less dangerous guys i mean uh who let me see here can you show me uh ian's last few fights his wins and losses yeah. huh mm -hmm. thank you okay here we go do you want me to send it to you yes please All right, so Ian, just as far as skill-wise, I mean, there's some areas that he'll have the advantage over this guy, yeah, and that's why I'm saying live betting might be something that we can look into on here. But overall, at the end of the day, I think that Brandon Allen, just like how he beat Kevin Holland, he looks, this guy, this is the same guy that called out when nobody wanted to even mention Shemayev's name. This guy was calling Shemayev out. So he, he's got heart, he's got the cojones, he's got the skills what can make somebody more dangerous than that combination itself, you know? But uh, I wasn't too impressed. Heinish, you know, he, he kind of, he, he's somewhat of like a high train to me. Like he started off like kind of looking like he can be something, but we, we saw him exposed a few different times. So uh, I'm not too high on him right now. And uh, he, I see why he's the underdog here and uh, odd makers, in my opinion, got it right. Don't let the guys fool you. There's going to be some guys that are doing this, uh, uh, thing that I'm doing here that'll tell you like there's value when you see an underdog that shouldn't be an underdog or should be a pick -ums or and that because alone they see value in it they recommend you put some money on it no man we're not gonna put money on somebody that we know should lose there's no value in that yeah just because the numbers are wrong that's not gonna that, uh, treat that's like that's their way of suckering you in and don't, don't fall for those tactics that they use I've seen a lot of guys who were like plus 500 that should have been plus 100 only that didn't make me fall just because you're promising to pay me way more money than you should is isn't going to make me put my money on a guy who i know shouldn't win the fight i mean what's the difference between just doing that and throwing your money down the drain right i mean you know i only put bets on i rather win a little bit and be sure that the chances are in my favor than have the chance to win a lot but it'd be a bad, un, more unlikely chance to win it. Then, so I'd rather have a for sure chance to win a little bit than an unlikely chance to win a lot, right? What's an unlikely chance gonna do for you? Especially if you do it more often, and you know, the longer you keep doing that, the, the more money you're gonna be in a negative instead of positive. Anyways, back to the winners and losers. If you guys think that I'm talking too much and the sidetracking stuff that I try to do to help you guys understand me and get to know me more in my system, and my ideology in the later future videos don't worry once you guys have gotten to know me and how i operate i promise i'll be getting through these much faster okay but if it does bother you i apologize please leave some kind i'm open to constructive criticism anything you guys can do to help me make these videos better and to your likings please i'm not a sensitive guy put it in the comments all right or you can message me directly we're like family man if you're watching this and you're a subscriber or a member especially we're a family, you can freely talk to me any way you would talk like, like your brother or your mother or your father. All right, next fight, who do we got? Oh yeah, so we picked, um, we got Brendan Allen on this fight, winning. It's gonna be a good fight, a little bit back and forth. And like I said, this is one of those that you may wanna consider doing some live betting on. Anyways, Brendan Allen, not a very good parlay pick, but definitely something that you can put some straight money on and live bet. 
All right, now we are at the next fight is, where are we at now? Round number seven. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, this one's a good one. It's the eighth. Eighth fight is Rayoni Barcelos versus Kali Taha. What can we say? Just to get quick to speed up a little bit here, we're going to go through. Uh, Rayoni Barcelos is very impressive, man. This guy's got uh, his last win. was. He's got. He's the only person who can say that they, he's defeated Saeed Namagredov. Look at the last name itself. That's it. That gives him points in my book. He beat a Nurmagomedov. Khabib's relative, if I'm not mistaken, but forgetting whose relative he is, whether he's a relative or not, I may even be mistaken on that. It could just be a coincidence that they're in a UFC and they're sharing the same last name as uh, Khabib. But uh, this guy, you see what he did to Mark Striegel? Mark Striegel was a very uh, big prospect with a big credential uh, name coming out of the Philippines. He was an Olympian. He's got 18 wins by submission in the first round. He's got... He's a judo black belt, all around just excellent, all around credible for a fighter. And this guy annihilated him in the first round, took his head off almost, man, and laid him out, put him to sleep. He's a good, he's a good fighter all around, man. Saeed is a no joke, and he he beat him unanimously from him. It wasn't even a split decision. Um, unanimous decision. So he beat him all three rounds decisively. So. If, uh, you know, if you ask me, man, this should be a mismatch. And uh, he's definitely a parlay piece. I wasn't too impressed with the research I did on his opponent. We don't have to get too into it. They got, his nickname is The Warrior, but nothing too warrior-like. He does got some power in his hands, He's but he's very uh, basic, you know, one-trick pony, very stiff. Nothing that this guy's never seen before and ha hasn't seen better versions of this guy before. So he went through a no contest to, to, uh, against Bruno Silva. He lost against uh, Nad Naromani. He beat, uh, and he's not, you know, he's not very, uh, he's not very active like before, let's see here. He was fighting like once a year before he got to the UFC. He wasn't very active. So this guy, you know, I don't think fighting is something he does take as serious as uh, as uh, his uh, his opponent, Rowney. So I'm, he's more vested. I think Rowney's more vested into this career of his. So he's coming off a good uh, win. Momentum is on his side. The skills, everything. I'm definitely not seeing any red flags or any concerns that would make me not want to parlay. So this is a good parlay piece, I would say. Uh, we'll look more into it later in the week uh, to see if we'll... Uh, also, I just want you guys to know, even though I do get ahead of the movement, I do have my uh, picks already sent to the members, and uh, and I'm doing it with you guys now. But anybody who's not a member, you guys will not get these picks, unfortunately, because I, I have another job. I'm doing you a favor by this week getting them out to you guys early because... I'm trying to gain some some followers and show you guys what I'm capable of doing when I put my head to it. But next week, I got to get back to work, my real job. I have a real job and a business that I'm running as well. So I have a lot of ventures I got to do outside of this. That's why I was saying the more you guys can donate and subscribe and become members, the more able I'm to transition into doing this full time. And then I can always get you the content sooner than later. But next week, I don't intend on getting you guys my picks until at least Thursday or Friday, the latest, I would say. Friday, the earliest would be Thursday. By then, the lines would have moved a lot, just to give you a heads up, so you don't have to depend on it again to be uh, on this early in the week for you guys next Saturday, next Saturday's cards. So, but anyways, back to my point. Um, we were talking about Saeed. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, he just came off of a win, so I'm definitely gonna uh, keep him his his uh, momentum rolling. And I see him getting a, a clear victory here. All right. And uh, the next fight here coming up would be, ooh, this is a nice one. Uh, man, this is a good card. This is a sleeper card, huh? All right. Tanner Bozer versus Andre Arlaski. Man, I can't believe I'm still saying this guy's name. Uh, this is the Bernard Hopkins of the UFC. This guy does not, does not look like he should be retiring, but, man, he's got to be on his last years, right? How much more can he have left? And not just because of his age. He's up there in the 40s, but 
he's been through some wars, this guy, man. And he doesn't really look like he doesn't. He doesn't speak punch drunk. He's very sophisticated still. He's very clear. He speaks clearly. His ring IQ is something that, you know, nobody, will, unless you're like an Alistair Overeem, who, who's been through it all and has like 500 fights under his belt. Huh? He's 41. 41, yeah. He's still, still not that old. But for, for, the, for the division that he's in, 41 is like 50. If it was a heavyweight, you know, or something like that, that'd be uh, different. But or actually, no, is he, is he still, yeah, he is fighting. Uh, let's see. What, how much does he weigh right now? Yeah, well, he's up there. Yeah, you're right. He is an heavyweight. Okay, uh, he's fighting versus Tanner Bozer. And Tanner, they call him the bulldozer for... Sorry about the skipping in the, between the video. I'm going to pick up where we left off. Uh, we had some te technical difficulties uh, with the footage. Now we're back to the uh, last fight we were on was the uh, Andre Arlovsky versus... Ba uh, the bulldozer Tanner Bozer and we've got Tanner Bozer on this to get the win won't be a surprise if anything went wrong and Arlovsky like found a way to just get us some type of squeak away with a split decision victory you know he's always a live dog or like a crazy knockout that came out of left field nobody saw it coming because he's always you know he's very sneak sneaky He's very, he's always going to be in his face and either he had to knock this guy out or, uh, but he, uh, he should have this one in the bag. Like nine out of 10 times at this age, stage in the career for Arlovsky, like, you know, 10 years ago, I definitely would have had, well, not that, like, even five, six years ago, I might've had uh, Arlovsky in this spot, but I got to go with uh, the, the bulldozer Bozer. I mean, he strikes, he's very pr pr crisp accurate he throws way more than he gets he absorbs here he throws twice as much as he absorbs where that's not the same to say for uh alaski who likes to take a hit to give a hit and sometimes takes more hits to give a hit so either whether it's by points and getting the unanimous decision or even a finish uh somewhere in the middle or even early rounds i could see it being uh, stopped early but one way or another, I got Bo Bozer getting the W here. Uh, the next fight, did we go to Ian already, the girls? No. So who are we on now? Uh, the main event. That's it, are you sure? Yeah. All right. Main event. Now, we've got Glover Teixeira versus Thiago Santos. Uh, Glover, you know, a seasoned vet. He's got some IQ. He's got some ground game he's got he's dangerous on the ground a little bit i don't see this going to the ground it's not going to be an anthony anthony smith type of a fight where anthony smith gassed out early in the first round he fought differently than he's ever fought before thinking he can take uh this glover out who besides anthony smith fight he's always been very durable and you know anthony smith packs some power that now nah, but not Besides uh, maybe uh, Francis Ngannou, nobody else really possessed the type of power. The, you see seen what he did to Daniel Cormier he, in the first round. He punched him so hard that the guy flew across the ring. But uh, anyways, uh, so I don't see uh, this staying on the ground or going to the ground even. You, you know how uh, difficult it is to get uh, Santos down. He's Brazilian. Uh, he's got reach, he's got strength, his leg kicks, which is the equivalent to what a jab would do, but with his legs, he'll keep him at a range, at a distance where he needs to pick him apart, and his power is just out of the, uh, you know, it's crazy what he could do. You've seen what he did to Jones. Uh, Santos has a win over the current champion, John Blakovich, Blakovich, I always say his name, but he's got a win over the champion. He knocked him out cold, and so we can say that he's somebody who, is a threat to the current champ who looked very impressive against Dominic Reyes. And we uh, should see, like, again, this is another one of those fights. The odds are just, they don't make sense. He should be a huge favorite here. Yeah, but we didn't, we don't know how he's going to look after his surgeries. He did have some surgeries. So this is one of those that if I, uh, for any reason, see him looking weird at the weigh-ins or the face-offs, if he's limping or something odd like that, I'll definitely tell you guys to hedge off of it. But as of right now, we got some heavy chalk I would recommend to put on Thiago, and he'll be in a lot of our parlays because he should clearly get a win over here 
against the older uh, the, uh, Glover Textura. All right, let's just do a quick recap. Make sure you guys got this all right in case you don't have my betting slips. But hey, another benefit if you guys want to get the membership besides having my bet slips to make sure that your system is flawless, bulletproof, and you make the maximum profits on it. I even know how to turn, like last week, the heaviest favorites of the night, like Kevin Holland, minus 715, uh, Alex Hernandez, minus four something, and Yanez, Adrian Yanez, minus 500. All those fights, I use the prop bets inside the fights to get near even odds, and some of them even plus money. I found a way of turning the biggest favorites of the night, huge heavy favorites, and we don't have any of those in this card. That's why I said this is the best paying, the best, most profitable paying card that we've ever seen in such a in a very long time, if not ever. I've never seen every every single one of these for the biggest favorite of this night, and there's only one of them that's even a, that you can consider being a big favorite. It's not even that big of a favorite, and he's, and he's worth it. It's uh, for a guy who's undefeated and shown very impressive uh, fights since he's uh, got into the UFC. But anyways, uh, back to this fight. Uh, lay some heavy chalk, to, you know, dip into your savings, break your piggy bank open, do whatever you got to do, empty your kid's savings account, college funds. You're going to, I'm just kidding, don't do that. Uh, but no, for real, lay some chalk on this one. It's worth it. You won't regret it. And... Uh, you, you're going to make a killing. Uh, another one of the benefits of being a member is live betting, man. Like, that's only some fights. But hearing me, like, if I was commentating on these fights during the fights, I'll be telling you what you're looking at in the perspective of a fighter and a trainer and a hardcore serious fan of the sport for years. So seeing my input and my knowledge being uh, translated during the fights can earn you a lot of money if you're the type that does live betting from home online or you're at the casinos ready to pull the trigger on these bets or during the fight you want to listen in on a companion so leave some comments let me know if you guys want me to do a companionship and uh, that way it can be included with the membership or I mean, maybe even uh, for people who aren't members I'll find a way to get you guys inside the companion as well but again this is something that you know I may dip into that conflict with the hours of when I'm gonna be working so the more donations you guys can give and help me out it would be feasible for me to take a day off and take this more seriously all right so uh, let's recap to make sure you guys got everything correctly without having to rewind through the entire fight card all right starting from the first one I see down here we got uh, Darren Elkins beating Eduardo Gregory uh, Rayoni Barcelos beating Colette Taha and we got Gustavo Lopez, who we found out uh, his opponent, right, Sweetie? Yeah. Uh, we got Gustavo Lopez may need a new opponent, or maybe Felipe. Uh, I don't know if he's out or what, but he, they said that he's got coronavirus. He's got, he, he contracted the COVID virus, so Felipe is out, right? Yeah. Yeah, Felipe is out, and they're probably going to find a replacement for Gustavo Lopez. But usually when they do a replacement, it's going to be somebody that's even a bigger underdog so we, we shouldn't find somebody we shouldn't really see the tables turning on Lopez he should still stay this a favorite if anything changed I'll let you guys know as I said I'll make another video or contact you guys if you remember now uh, Max Griffin versus Ramiz Barmaj he's one of my only two by the way one of the favorites is now or I have a, another underdog we have two underdogs this card one of the favorites has just turned into an underdog so woohoo I, a card that was already paying good is going to be paying even better uh our good friend uh where did he go Brandon Allen. Brandon Allen the guy who beat Kevin Holland and submitted him didn't just beat him but put him away uh, Kevin Holland the guy who was the biggest favorite last in minus 700 that he beat him and put him away submission and he's on an impressive win streak right now. That guy is an underdog here against a guy who's lost against people who are not impressive. Anyways, so we're going to definitely go with that underdog for the night. And the second underdog of my night is Ramiz Bra uh, Brahimaj. So uh, if Sarah Moras is fighting, I don't know if she is. Some places show she is, some places show she isn't. But in case she is, I got Sarah Moras beating Vanessa Mello. And I think that's another parlay piece. I, I'm very impressed with what I've seen from Sarah Moras. She's a very dominant, dominating type of uh, force in the ring. 
Giga Chikada, I can never say this uh, Georgian's name. He's a he's the guy who just beat that uh, hype train in Omar, whatever his name was. He came in like undefeated. He picked him apart. He was an underdog, I think, against Omar. He was a big underdog. Yeah, he was like a plus two, three hundred underdog. Now he's coming in as a favorite, moderate size favorite. There are no big favorites on this card. That's what I was saying. So. Anyways, uh, the next so we got Giga. If he does fight, I don't know if he will or not. We're looking into that as we speak. Any word on that yet? Nothing. Nothing yet. Okay, the next one, Andre or, or I'm sorry, Alexander Romanov versus Marco Rogerio, a Brazilian. Uh, we got uh, Alexander Romanov, a good parlay piece here. So we got him getting the W. And the next one is the new hype train that I don't think is gonna ever derail. She's looking very impressive against a game, Gladia Gadella. We have to go with the new prospect, Jan Zainan. And like I said, anybody with the name Jan has been looking impressive. We got Peter Jan, which I'm going to do a breakdown for that video, by the way. I want you guys to look out for the breakdown I'm going to do for Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Jan. It's an awesome. And when you guys get someone like me breaking down fights, who's got my fighting IQ knowledge and experience as trainer especially too. Like I used to train... You know, the same way like a, a dish, a guy who eats a meal and doesn't have money to pay for it, would, they would make him wash dishes. That's how I started to become a trainer. I used to train at Windy City Boxing Club. Anybody who's from Chicago, repping the Shy town baby, Shy towns find the shy rack in the house. Anyways, so I was at Windy City Boxing Club since I was like 13 years old. I was the first guy in the door at 7 a.m., the last guy out at 7 p.m. My trainer, his nickname was uh, NBC. He was a former champ, and this guy found out that I was serious about this, and that he, when he seen me putting 12 hours a day in at the gym, seven days a week, six days a week, because they were closed on Sundays, and it was in the worst neighborhood ever. So he seen me driving from the nicer neighborhoods, and he knew how serious I was taking this. He never charged me for membership, but his way of not getting in trouble by the owner and didn't want to get fired, he used to say that, well, now we're going to use him to train the new recruits. Anybody who just came in off the streets, who didn't know the basics, I would have to be the guy who trained him. I would teach him, and they used to put a broom over my head. I used to have to do these turning things to keep their hands. We used to do the bicycle, the tires on the ground, and have to keep it and go burn your calves, teach them how to pivot their back foot when you're doing the punch, how to twist it. So I was just teaching basics, but then I got to advance. I did 12 years of boxing, so I became a professional I became an advanced trainer. I was, you know, doing helping people in their corners and whatever. So I also did karate. I did wrestling. So all different types of arts. That's what made it, made me a mixed martial arts specialist. Anyways, uh, back to uh, so did we finish doing the recap? Thiago Santos. I said Glover. Yeah, Thiago Santos is gonna be Glover. So we did all that. Uh, look out for the prop bets. I'm gonna come up with some real good prop bets coming up soon. That's gonna be my next video. I'm gonna do a video for fade of the week, which means last week I did a fade, two fades of the week. I did Maurice Green and Anderson Silva because one was beyond his expiration date. He should have been retired if it wasn't for his name value and his contract. He should have been long gone already. And Dana White said it himself. I don't know how other there's other guys who have podcasts and YouTube channels that were even picking. Uh, this guy, I just don't see how people saw him having a chance, but uh, even Uriah Hall looking at his worst and being trigger uh, shy, gun shy, not wanting to do any speed. I think he landed seven strikes or 11 strikes in the second round total. Terrible. It was like the Musasi fight to win Salima reminded me of. Anyway, which we could talk about another time. I do have a lot to say about that fight. Anyways, uh... Even at his worst performance, he ends up getting a knockout, which I saw happening. I seen it. I got the under four and a half on that one, correct? So, but anyways, uh, back to the point was we're gonna have some great prop bets. My prop bets always hit; those pay very well. You only have to be right less than half the time, and you'll still be in profits. And I'm never wrong by more than at least maybe one at most on those. So look out for that. I'll do a fade of the week. Last week's fade of the week: Maurice Green and Silva both got knocked out. They got put to sleep. Knock the hell out. Like the next fight, you got knocked though. I don't know why I get kicked out of YouTube already. Anyway, so uh, look out for my fades of the week. That means you can lay some heavy chalk against them. If I put them under my fades of the week, it's money in the bank. You can put it against them and cash in on net. Uh, and I want to do more talking about this uh, bulletproof system that I use per every week that's going to make you thousands. Hundreds will turn into thousands. Thousands will turn into double digit thousands and triple if you're smart. All right, guys, thank you for your time. Oh, let me leave a comment about what the nickname of the group is going to be. 
and some uh, you know suggestions would help i'm open to some suggestions constructive criticism and how i can make these videos better and also uh, tell me your opinion if you want me to do companion for uh, you guys because uh, remember live betting is crucial essential part of making some money and if we are listening to me dissect these fights and breaking them and tell you what to look for and when to bet and when not to bet and when to hedge your off your bets and stuff like that you can win and save and stop yourself from losing a lot of money and so companions ships can be worth a lot of money to you and make you a lot of money and save you from losing a lot of money if you uh listening to the right guy and i am that guy so you'll you'll notice that the longer you listen to me thank you for your time and god bless stay safe talk to you guys soon